Hi everyone, this lesson is on long COVID and research showing who is most susceptible and why they may be most susceptible in getting long COVID. Before we talk about who is most susceptible, let's talk about long COVID and some of the signs and symptoms. So long COVID is also known as post-acute COVID syndrome or post-COVID syndrome. It is a condition involving debilitating symptoms that occur after an acute COVID infection. Now, depending on the definition or where in the world the definition is utilized, symptoms are going to either last at least four weeks or at least 12 weeks. So we can think of it as a time period of symptoms that occur after a COVID infection and symptoms last at least four to 12 weeks. And research now shows that the average duration of long COVID can most often be over 18 months, so over a year and a half. So this is a very debilitating condition. And what are some of the signs and symptoms of long COVID? These include fatigue. This can be very debilitating fatigue and tiredness, brain fog. So patients just cannot concentrate and think as clearly as they used to. They can have headaches, so they can have persistent headaches that can recur. And also some other psychiatric effects can occur, including depression and anxiety as well. So now let's discuss some of the evidence on who is susceptible to long COVID. Now, there's been some new research showing that long COVID is more prevalent in biological female patients. In fact, after correcting for other potential factors, biological females have a 31 to 44% increased risk compared to biological males. And in fact, the rates of long COVID and the risk for getting long COVID is the highest in young biological females, so those who are non-pregnant and non-menopausal. So this is in contrast to pregnant females and menopausal females. Pregnant females between the ages of 18 to 39, their risk was actually comparable to males. So pregnancy seems to reduce the risk of long COVID. And menopausal females had a lower risk as well, although perhaps not as low as age-related males. So this indicates that there is a hormonal influence to the risk and likely the severity of symptoms of long COVID as well. So the menstrual cycle likely plays a role. And we do know that estrogen and progesterone levels, as they change throughout the menstrual cycle, these can alter immune system functioning. And this is likely playing a role here. Now, the reason as to why younger female patients who are non-pregnant are more likely to get long COVID is not entirely understood. There are at least several different hypotheses as to why this may be playing a role. Some of these include persistent viral infection, reactivation of a dormant virus, something like herpes virus, viral associated inflammatory damage to tissues, and also autoimmunity. So it's likely, and we don't know fully yet, but it's likely that it has to do with the immune system functioning in biological females compared to biological males. So there may be more viral associated inflammatory damage to tissues and also a higher risk of autoimmunity. And we do know that autoimmunity is more prevalent in biological females. So this is what we're going to focus on here as a potential reason for why we see higher rates of long COVID in females. Now to understand why there is a difference in the prevalence of autoimmunity and potentially why there's an increased risk of long COVID in biological females, we have to get into the genetics that play a role. So at conception, an egg is always going to have an X chromosome. It can either be an X chromosome from their mother or from their father. And the sperm is either going to have an X chromosome or a smaller Y chromosome. And the combination of either the X or the Y from a sperm with the X from the egg is either going to create a biological female XX or a biological male, XY. Y, again, is a smaller chromosome. Now, there are many exceptions to this. We can have biological or genetic females who have only one X chromosome. They have what we call Turner syndrome. There are biological male patients that have more than one X chromosome, so they'd have multiple X chromosomes. That is Klinefelter syndrome. There's cases where there are patients who have complete androgen insensitivity syndrome. So they may be biologically male or genetically male with an X and a Y, but they actually are phenotypically female. So there are definitely exceptions to this rule. But with regards to the focus of what we're going to talk about here, this is going to be important for determining why biological females are at a higher risk for having not only autoimmunity, but long COVID. Now, why is that the case? We have to start off with what happens during embryonic development. So a biological female or an individual who has two XX chromosomes is going to undergo a process known as lionization or also known as X chromosome inactivation. Why does this happen? Well, 
you can imagine if you were to compare to the biological male or the XY genotype that we talked about in the last slide, the Y chromosome is much smaller, very, very small. It has a lot less genes on it than an X chromosome does. And the X chromosome has many different genes that play a role in the immune system of the patient. So what's going to happen during embryonic development is that one of these X chromosomes is going to undergo lionization or X chromosome inactivation and will become smaller or condensed. That small or condensed X chromosome is going to become what we call a bar body. This is generally a relatively random process. So which X chromosome becomes the bar body or becomes inactivated is a relatively random process. So it occurs in all cells in the body except the germ cells. And what this means is that if we were to look at immune cells, immune cells and other parts of the immune system, some immune tissues, can also have certain of these X chromosomes becoming randomly inactivated. So we can get things like this one being inactivated in one immune cell or an immune tissue, another one being inactivated or condensed in another immune cell, and so on. And this leads to what we call mosaicism, kind of this mosaic pattern of random X chromosomes being inactivated in some cells and not inactivated in others. So we get the influence of some of the X chromosomes in some cells and not in other cells. So why is this important? The reason this is important is because the X chromosome has many different genes. And in fact, it has the most immune related genes in the whole human genome. So there are many immune related genes on an X chromosome. There's at least 60. These can include genes for the toll-like receptor, CD40L, FOXP3, BPK, CXCR3. So all these are different receptors, some receptors for switching between different antibodies, some for B cell maturation. So there's a lot of different genes here for immune system functioning. But the problem is that, and we didn't mention this before, there can be incomplete X chromosome inactivation. So what does that mean? So if we were to look at this particular immune cell, and one of the X chromosomes in the immune cell has become a bar body, it's become inactivated or condensed. The other X chromosome is still activated and there's certain genes on that X chromosome that are involved in immune cell functioning. The problem is that if there is incomplete X chromosome inactivation, there may be another immune cell that has that particular same X chromosome that wasn't inactivated in the other immune cell. It is inactivated, but it's not completely inactivated. So certain genes can still be turned on to produce immune system products. But the problem is that this immune cell has the other X chromosome that is still fully activated as well. So in those cases where we get incomplete inactivation of an X chromosome, we can get what we call immune related gene double dosing. So double dosing meaning that we're getting too much immune related gene product. And this can lead to problems with the immune system and increase the risk for autoimmunity. This is a potential reason for why we may be seeing higher rates of long COVID in biological females. If you want to learn more about long COVID, please check my lesson on that topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Please also consider joining as a member for members only content and early access to videos. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.